Today, I want to speak on the subject, the mystery of delay. Somebody shout and say, the mystery of delay. Or oh, scream it and say, the mystery of delay. How many of you are here, um, you, 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 you want to be delayed so that we can celebrate you? If you are here, you want to be delayed so that we can... Give me a wave. Oh, nobody. It means that everybody wants to progress, right? Yeah, that's good. Everybody wants to do well. Yeah, that's good. I have always said that no one is useless. That's why, for me, I don't trust people who don't have money or are poor when they are very humble. Because you can never know the true state of a man except when he is working in money. You see somebody today, the person will see you and he's saluting you. Hey, yes, of course, yes, of course. Wait until they get money and see whether they will salute you soon. Amen. Because of delay, a lot of people are consulting other goals. In case you are not aware, I'm telling you today. When I was young, when I was young, the voodoo men and the juju men or the malams, they were not doing advert on television. They were not doing billboards and they were not on social media. In fact, where I come from, if you wanted to see a Dibia or you wanted to see um, um, FO or all these guys, you needed to travel miles and cross rivers. And in fact, somebody has to show you where. And usually they are in a very obscure places. But today, go on social media, you will see somebody's number, they say, call me. And many of the time is as a result of the fact that many of us think that we are delaying. Two of us. Yeah, so we won't quick. Why do you think that a lot of people move from one prophetic meeting to another? I don't blame them because you see, the way God has wired human beings. We are wired in a way to seek for answers. So when things are not going the way they ought to, you want to seek answers. You want to find out, why is my life the way it is? Why is my life like that? Why am I not making progress? Why is my life this way? Because whether you like it or not, all of us are journeying. We are all journey. Life is a journey, whether you like it or not. You are either moving from point A to point B, or somebody is moving from point B to point C. But the issue is not the journey. The issue is not the journey. The issue is about you arriving. Hello? Hello? Turn your Bibles to Proverbs 13, verse 12. Proverbs 13, verse 12. Proverbs 13, verse number 12. Go there quickly for me. The Bible said, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so, there are many of us who are sojourning. We are, we are moving, we are trying to move from one point to another. You see, some of us, I was preaching somewhere abroad. And I said, when people sat in the plane, and they were traveling, in their mind, America, here I come. Or if they are going to Europe, Europe, here I come. But I tell you, it is not about the journey. It's about arrival. 
Because you see, there are people who will start their journey, but they will never arrive. That is why I tell people all the time, gold is not the most precious resources. No. Gold, diamond, is not the most precious resource. The most precious resources are men and women who were born to happen and they never happened to their generation. They were born to make an impact in their generation. They were born to be problem solvers in their generation, but they never. And so many of them, they died with their gift, they died with their talent, they died with their potential. Have you not seen people like that before? You know that this one is born to be great. But he never became. You see, the Bible said, hope deferred makes the heart sick. You see, many of us, already the, the Bible says that the heart is utterly wicked. So imagine if the heart is sick. And so there are many of you seated here, and many of you watching me online, your heart is sick. You don't care anymore. That's why people don't care what they do to make money. Whether it is through fraudulent means, whether it's through wagadri means, because their heart is sick, because their hope has been deferred. Today, it is no more news that we, there are women who want to be second wives, third wives, because their heart is sick. Because their hope has been deferred. And when your hope is deferred and keeps deferring, at a point it becomes sick. You don't care certain values anymore because you feel that I've been delayed. Am I speaking to somebody? Yeah. And so there are many people who are sick. You see people today, they are willing to consult oracles for money. They are willing to kill for money. They are willing to rob for money. They are willing to do anything so long as they will succeed. Because their heart is sick. Because their hope has been deferred. As I said, there are three categories of people. Some who will never arrive. They will never arrive. Then, we have those who will arrive, but they will get to their destination late. You see, let me tell you something about life. There are people who, in all their years in America, or traveling, they will struggle and struggle and struggle. And when they are about to enter their evening season, that is when they break through. Now, at that level, if... if you struggle your entire life and you break through at the age of 60, 65, 70. How will you enjoy that money? Because by the time you are reaching 60, your doctors are telling you, now you need to watch your diet. You can't eat meat. You can only eat fish. You can, you can, you can only eat leaves. I mean, you can't you can even enjoy. Because at that level... Your body metabolism and mechanism are telling you, we've carried you for 60 years. And are you aware of the, of the average lifespan of a, every human being now? According to World Health Organization. So, it means that if you arrive and you arrive late, it's still a problem. It is still a problem. Let me give you another example. If you're a woman, listen to me. And you are trusting God to get married. And you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And eventually you got married at the age of 50. There are certain things you can't do. You can't do it. Because if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, it means that now we have to do another prayer session. To trust God 
that menopause will be postponed so that you can get pregnant. Am I speaking to somebody? So you have arrived by getting married, but you arrive late. Let me, let me give you another example. If you're a man and you are marrying at the age of 50, do you know what you're actually saying to yourself? By the time you reach 60, your first son or first daughter is now finishing uh, junior high. And when they are following you, people will assume that's your grandchild, but it's actually your son. Am I, am I speaking to somebody? So you are arriving, but you are arriving late. May that never be your portion. I said, let it not be your portion. Somebody scream and said, I will arrive on time. Then we have the third category of people, and, and they are the ones the Bible says in the verse. Go, go. It said, but when the desire comes, it becomes what? The tree of life. Hallelujah. The third category are the ones who will get there on time. Go to Psalm 90, verse 12. Psalm 90, verse 12. I see you getting there on time. I said you will arrive on time. Listen. Until you arrive, your generation does not know you. Until you arrive, your generation will never salute you. I was sharing at church and I was telling them, if there is a funeral and they call you for the funeral, and they give you date. You have not arrived. You, you have not yet arrived. But when there's a funeral, and they call you, and they say, sister, auntie, brother, we have a funeral at hand. Give us a date. Then you know you have arrived. <laughs> but when they set the date and they give you date, it means that you are, you are yet to arrive. May somebody arrive on time. I said, may you arrive on time. Now, now, this is what it says. Psalm 90 verse 12. So David said, teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart to wisdom. You see, there are many people who think that today's date is what? First September 2023. 1st September 2023 will never come again. Recently, I was watching Bill Gates. He was being interviewed. And they asked him a question. And this was the question they asked him. They said, if you have the opportunity to spend your money on something valuable, what would that be? Do you know what he said? He said, time. He said, I'll buy time. You see, many of you ladies, you don't have time. If you were a lady here, and at the age of 30, your mother is still feeding you, taking care of you, there's a big problem. This program is designed for you. I'm telling you the truth. If you are a man, and you are 30 years and your mother is still feeding you. There's a big problem. Your own it has passed deliverance. I, I'm serious. You see, I tell younger people all the time that there are three seasons in the life of every man. Your morning season. Your morning season starts from zero to 30. Ask your mothers and ask the older ones. When you get to 20, 18, 20, you cause accident on the road. As the ladies, they'll tell you how many accidents they have caused on the road. But at a certain point, nobody looks at you again, no. Because now, potholes have entered your face. 
So you have to do more makeup to feel it. Am I speaking to somebody? That is the time when they come and they want to marry you. You see your family, I, I, people go to marry and they give them very simple list and they'll be praising the woman's family. Oh, this family, they are nice people. They are not nice, so you have become a liability. They must get rid of you. So they don't want to complicate things by bringing a long list. But you think if you are in your 18 to 20, 25, the list they will give. But when they look at you with all your potholes, you see, you see, let me tell you something. The problem about many ladies is that they think they will be beautiful forever. And so when men come their way and they want to marry them, they start becoming choosy and picky. Oh, I want to go to school. I want to school. I want to get my degree. After degree, I want to do my master's. I want to do my doctorate. So the men are coming. We are pushing them away. There are some, they will not even push the men. No. They, they have the ones who rent for them. They have the ones who buy credit. So they, they, they store their numbers Mugu 1, Mugu 2, Mugu 3, Mugu 4. You think you are fooling everybody. But you see, it does not rain every day. Does it rain every day? And you see, in your morning season, by that time, it is expected of you to settle down. To marry. Start planning your future. Children have started coming. But guess what? Many of the mistakes that a lot of people do, they do it in their morning. Ask anybody who has ever grown and got into a certain stage in life. Most of the mistakes that they did, they did it in their morning. They did it in their morning. Dating somebody's husband. Committing abortion. Swindling people. They did all these things in their morning. You know why Satan allows you to do all this mistake in your morning? Because that is the critical level. That is the foundation. Once you get it wrong, whatever certificate you get in your morning, you enter it, you enter your afternoon with it. So some of you, forgive me, I want to be very blunt. You see, deliverance, when you are teaching it, you can't you can be diplomatic. Some of you, you see, when you were entering your afternoon, the certificate of your born one, born two, you entered and graduated into your afternoon with them. So they are falling a handbag. They always remind you of your mistake. Because in your morning when they were talking to you and your parents were talking to you, oh, oh, you were swelling headed. You were arrogant. You were proud. But you forget that the morning season is the critical period. It's the foundation. So David said, teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart to wisdom. You see some young men. When ladies come to them, nice, beautiful ladies, instead of settling down with them, I clear them. Then they'll be competing with their friends. Good girls, oh, who even cook, come and wash, tidy up their room. They are not seeing that, oh. Then they'll be competing with their friends. Tell them, yesterday come. I clear them. <laughs> you, are, you are clearing your destiny away. You are delaying yourself. And so there are many people who have delayed their own destiny. You see, I tell people, God does not bless a mess. Oh, that thing they tell you, oh, God will turn your mess into a message. God doesn't bless a mess. Whatever mess you did in your morning, you will have to go back and correct it and come back. That's how deliverance works. That is why you have to be careful of the choices that you make today. Because you see, many people are suffering today not because God didn't bless them. Not because they didn't get equal opportunities. But because of the things they did in their morning. They graduated into the afternoon. By afternoon, your afternoon starts from 30 to 60. 
It is expected at that time your children have grown. They finished university. You are planning for your retirement. By the time you reach 60 plus one, you are preparing for eternity. But you know the mystery about life? Go and check people's age. Some of them are 60. They even cut their age so that they can work. I was, I was telling the church the, the last time, those days when we were growing up, you never saw an old lady or a lady older than 40 wearing a puskeleke or wearing a tight jeans with her breasts pumping up. You don't see those competitions. It was the young ones, 18, 19, 20. Now, I don't blame them all because some of them, they have wasted their money. So now they have to compete with the young girls. And the only way they can also get husband is to put on the things that the young girls are putting on. Because if they don't do that, they will be left single for a very long time. There are many people the things they should have done in their morning, they are now trying to do it in their evening. And so, if you mess up your morning, your evening will not be sweet. And so David said, teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart to wisdom. Go to verse, verse 14. Verse 14, I love it so much. He said, oh, satisfy us early. There is something about early satisfaction. When the Lord satisfies you early. When the Lord satisfies you early. Oh. Early satisfaction. When you are now old. And money comes. How are you going to spend the money? When you are old. All your waste. Is paining you. Then you go and marry. Then you, the man says, raise this one. You can't even do it. Am I, I speaking to somebody? So he says what? Satisfy us early with your mercy. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. May you be satisfied early. I said, may you be satisfied early. Somebody saw this, I receive it. Yeah. Now, listen, when you read the Bible in Daniel chapter 10, the Bible said, when Daniel said to pray, the very time Daniel decided to pray, the Bible said an answer was released for Daniel. But the prince of Persia withstood the prayers of Daniel for 21 days. For 21 days. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. It is not that God doesn't want your prayer to be answered. I tell people all the time that many of us, when we die and we go to heaven, we'll have a shock of our lives. Because the very things that we have been praying about has been released to us. But they are in the storeroom. And until you pray, you will not get the delivery. And so some of you, you have asked God certain things. And the thing is delaying. It is in a storeroom. If you don't pray, you will not take delivery of it. But I see somebody taking delivery tonight. I say you will take delivery in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that is why some of you, because of delay, and you, you feel your prayers have not been answered, you are angry with God. You, you, you are, and, and you see, church members, when they don't see God, they, they turn their frustration to the pastor. So, when you're a pastor, we, we, we can feel it. Because you see, when we come and stand here, when you guys are angry with God, because you can't see God, you, you look at us, this man, he's even lucky I came to church today. <laughs> let me tell you, let me give you a shocker. Everything you have prayed about, so long as it is in the will of God, God has released it. But taking delivery of it is another thing. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Taking the journey is not as important as arriving. Let, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, where I've got into in life, nothing moves me anymore. You know why? I have seen people who had money, 
I mean, when you come and tell me, oh, pastor, I have money, oh, it doesn't move me. Because it is not how you start the journey that matters. It is the arrival. Or having to hear people say, oh, when I came to this country, we were the ones who started making money in this, uh, in this uh, Maryland. We were making money. But, but today, where are they? Where are all those people today? So it's not just about starting the journey. It's about arriving. Some people started the journey of marriage. Today, they are divorced. Some people started the journey of politics. Today, they are no more doing politics. It's about arrival. I'm asking somebody. Yeah, it's about you arriving. Amen. Go to Genesis 11. Let me show you something. Genesis 11 verse 31. Genesis eleven thirty one. Those of you are young. Mothers, do you know that sometimes your children and fathers, do you know that sometimes they insult you in their head, but they don't want to tell you? Do you know that? Yeah. And sometimes, you see, when I was a very young guy, my father used to tell me when we were watching TV together, then we're watching news and some politician. Then my, my dad would be like, oh, this guy, I know him in school. Then he thought he was bragging. You see? But after he left my presence, I, was, I would put my hands on my head. Because the guy who doesn't know anything is <laughs> a politician driving a V8. And my father... Who, was intel who is intelligent? Those days, woman of God, if you come to our house and we give you a chair and you make a mistake and you sit down, especially if you are wearing white, we will redecorate your dress for you. The chair will redecorate your dress. You came with a white dress. By the time you are leaving, especially if you are a woman, they will think you have done your deed. Your thing is following you. But the church will redecorate it. When everyone was praying for rain, we will be singing, rain, rain, go away. Go and come another day. The Gaba family doesn't want rain. Rain, rain, go away. Because when it's raining, <laughs> that's when you see us fixing back at home. I'm telling you. So when I was growing up, I used to curse my father in my heart. Say, man, we are suffering. We are suffering. One day, I was in Instabu ministry. And I finished ministry and I entered my hotel. Started praying. You know, what made me pray that day was the testimonies people were sharing. Ah. <laughs> people say, ah, when Pastor Gaba came to preach, I received this. I said, hey, is it me they are talking about? So that day when I entered, they, they brought food. I said, today, whatever testimony is happening to the people, me, the pastor, too, it was happy to be you. So I started doing warfare. That night, the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, never curse your father. And I said, why? He said, rather try to discover what stopped them on the journey of life. Young folks, I'm going to throw you a challenge. Sit your mother down. Ask her questions. You will see that you, you, you are not even ambitious. Your mother, you are seeing her like that, thinking she is an illiterate working. Around. She wanted to become a medical doctor. But on the journey of life, something stopped her. And she never became. Either your father left her. Her dreams were shattered. Your, your father impregnated her. 
never accepted responsibility. Her dreams were shattered on the journey of life. And the Lord said to me, when you are able to discover the mystery behind their misery, because it is easy to judge your parents. Say, ah, my mother was useless, so look at, I, I, sometimes I used to look at my mother and father, I said, look at the two of them. Eh? He couldn't even go for a rich woman. Poor, poor. Combined together. <laughs> At least, if, 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 if you are poor, the man, go for somebody that something small is home now. The woman, she, nothing. The man, nothing. What, what kind of children do you think they give birth to? Nothing children. And so when these naughty children they start growing, they start cursing their, they look at their mother and say, ah! But let me tell you, don't curse your parents. Rather discover what stopped them on their journey. Because you see, in this life, let me tell you something. When a child fails to discover what stopped the parents, the mother, the father, whatever stopped them on their journey will stop you. And most of the time, whatever stopped them has been dead generational and has more foreknowledge than you. And I'll prove to you with the word of God. Many of you think that Abraham was the one giving the promise. No, Abraham wasn't the first person giving the promise of Canaan. No, Abraham wasn't. That's why in some families, oh, you've not seen some families before. Great grandfather started, they wanted to build a mansion. One year, one block. He started, uh, he died. Got to window level. Then your father came to continue. Got to roofing, died. You two are trying to continue to put roofing on top and do war. One house, three people, three generations are trying to build it. So many of the young people, I tell them, Whatever you are aspiring to become, your father dreamt about it. Your mother dreamt about it. But on the journey of life, something stopped them. It's your duty to discover it. Because you see, the problem about many of you is that you don't learn from history. They tell you that the past is not important. You see, many of you, that's your problem. These new creation teachers, they tell you, oh, don't dwell in your past. Don't. Why do you think I speak English? I speak English because I learned English in the past. The past is not to be dwelled. The past is to be visited. When the people don't learn from history, they repeat history. The reason why Africa, we are not doing well. Is because we don't learn from history. If we learn from history, we will not repeat certain mistakes. And when a child does not learn from history, he will repeat the same mistake his mother did, his father did, his aunties are doing, his uncles are doing. And Terah took his son Abraham and his grandson Lot the son of Haran and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abraham's wife, and they went out with them from U of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. They were, they were going somewhere. A promise. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. The promise was not Harano. The promise was Canaan. Young girl, because you are investing, you are looking down at your mother. I tell you, she was more ambitious than you. She was, your mother was more ambitious than you. Some of them, they had to sacrifice their education so you can go. When the Lord gave me this mystery, I stopped judging my father. I stopped judging him. Go to verse 32. Where my emphasis is. So the days of Terah were 205 years 
and Terah died in Haran. He never got to Canaan. Abraham, his son, also never got there. That's why I said some people, they will never get to their destination if God doesn't come in. It will only be an illusion to them and a dream. Unless God intervenes. It is yours. Yes. We bow down and worship. Look at me. Look at my face. Look at me. Okay, me. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Yes, fire, fire. Yes, one, two, three, fire. Yes, fire, fire. Yes, yes, fire. Lose the marriage. Lose, 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 lose. Yes, come out of there. Out, out. Yes, by the power of Holy Ghost. Raise up, raise up for me. Raise up for me. Raise up for me. I command every power from your background. That has been contending with your marriage, contending with your glory. Fire, 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 yes. Fire, fire, yes. Fire, yes, come out. Use her, use her, use her, use her, use her, use her. is fighting you is what is fighting here come come the two of you are connected raise your two hands listen to me God is going to make you popular okay but you have to walk in the timing of God and you have to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit do you hear me? This is what I saw. I saw a group of friends who are in the music industry. And I saw them telling you that they would take you to a certain man and that you should take your album there and go and leave your album there. And the man will give you certain directions. And that when you do it, your album will become very, you'll become big. Don't do it. You did hear what I said? God will give you prominence. But you must walk in the timings of God. This is what I heard. You are Yankee. Because I am seeing an album. And I see 
Yankee on it. And the album has become very popular. Very popular. But you must walk within the timing of God and you must live a life of consecration if you really want God to use you. Because one prayer you have been asking God is that God should use you to make a lot of impact in your generation. God said he has heard your prayer but you must walk in the timings of God. You are in your season but it is not yet your turn. The Lord said I should tell you be in the secret place until he has released you. Both of you have the similar word. Huh? You have a similar word. Similar to what I'm telling you. Stay in the secret place. I have just entered your background. This is what I saw in his background. I saw... When was the last time you went home? Eh? Yeah. Before you go home, I am seeing an obituary. I see a coffin. And I see the age 44, 45. Akwawe, they have marked him back home. Because I saw the thing like an ever name. Like Sedem or Seram. And I saw it on the obituary. And I see his picture there. And the thing is coming from his background. His father's side. Are you building back home? They don't understand why because I see a building coming up. Very beautiful one. They don't understand. They said that when did he because they, they've made it such a way. Are you married sir? You're married. Where's your wife? She's back home. They made it in such a way that it is either his life or the project they will fight him, his wife and make sure that the marriage doesn't work. Raise your hand towards him. I want us to pray for him. We need to pray for him. Some, some, you know, some, some house, they are villagers. They don't like good things. Some, some people, they are villagers. They don't.